Hey, Sai. I'm on vacation. Hey, Sai. Um, yeah? So, about that style again on Windows thing. Can we do that? Yeah, I guess we can do that. Yeah, nice. Uh, wait. Are we forgetting something? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <coughs> Let's do this. Let's do it. So, hello and welcome. In my last video, I casually showed how I use Saigon to myself, which is arguably mostly on Windows, since it's a bit of a pain to switch back and forth between Windows and Linux uh, if you want to do all the editing stuff in Adobe, which still doesn't really work on anything else than Windows. Unless you're a Mac person, I guess. But the point is, um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to replicate my setup, not in terms of the Adobe, but in terms of running StyleGAN 2 on Windows. <laughs> so, uh, since this video is already plenty long already, um, let me give you a brief summary of the steps that are involved. We are going to install some software and then we are going to um, import my own environment file that copies basically the whole environment setup that I have here uh, to your local computer. So uh, let's give a short overview over the software. The first software that we're going to install is Anaconda, which is basically an environment management software for Python environments. So you probably already know that the code for StyleGAN and many other machine learning algorithms is written in Python. And um, if you heard anything about Python, it is good to start and easy to learn, but it also has a bit of a reputation for making it hard to manage the environments, like installing lots of dependencies that might clash. And Anaconda is exactly the thing that solves this problem by giving you a clean Python environment where you can do exactly what you want to do. And uh, one of the features of Anaconda is that I can just take the environment that I have um, in my own Anaconda, export a file that declares what kind of stuff I have installed, and then have that re-imported. So what I did is I took the environment from this desktop computer and I installed it on this laptop computer. And uh, well, it's a long video, but I'm going to go through all the steps. Um, in order to make Anaconda run and properly use all the Python dependencies, we are also going to install um, CMake, which is a C++ compiler uh, that is used for much of the machine learning software in Python. Visual Studio Community Edition. And that comes with another compiler called CLang that is used for compiling some of the advanced TensorFlow operations that are used in StyleGAN. So these advanced TensorFlow operations are shipped as uh, development code basically and you have to compile them on your own machine. And for that we're going to use the CLang compiler or we're going to install it and then StyleGAN uses the CLang compiler automatically. And uh, we're also going to use NVCC which is a NVIDIA compiler that is specifically for TensorFlow operations. So that is um, the fourth and final thing that we're going to install, uh, the NVCC. And the NVCC is included in the NVIDIA CUDA toolkit, which is basically the basic framework on which most of the machine learning code is built upon. So to sum up, the four pieces of software we need are Anaconda, CMake, Visual Studio Code with the C++ workload package, um, and finally NVIDIA CUDA toolkit with the NVCC compiler. And then once we have all of this installed, um, we're going to import my environment YAML file into Anaconda and then everything installs and we can run um, StyleGAN on Windows, which is our ultimate goal here. So I first installed Anaconda and then I worked myself through the errors because I wanted to see how the experience is of uh, installing it on a fresh machine. And then I installed CMake, Visual Studio Code, and NVCC in that 
order because that was the order that fixed all the errors. But uh, if you know a bit more about the whole installation process, feel free to just um, install all four programs uh, just right ahead. Or otherwise, feel free to just follow the way that I did. Either way, it should be fine and get you to running style again on Windows. Um, yeah, I think that's basically it. Uh, the main challenge about doing all this style on Windows was basically always just knowing which tools to install and how to get everything set up and running. And one of the key components I think that was missing for many people was this environment YAML definition, which together with Anaconda just gives you a uh, good setup that can run style and there wasn't really all that much documentation on the GitHub page for Stylegun, in my opinion, to just know what to do and run it. And I hope I can fill in this gap. If any of this helps you, of course, obligatory shout out to like and subscribe. Uh, maybe head over to my Patreon and <laughs> um, send a couple bucks my way if this... Uh, has saved you an hour or two or even made it possible for you to install Stylegun and run it in the first place. If that kind of uh, tutorial is valuable to do, feel free to check out my Patreon, but I'm not gonna put anything behind the paywall, so feel free to just enjoy the video and of course <laughs> smash the like button. So let's get into it. So, hello and welcome to my StyleGen 2 on Windows with Anaconda tutorial. As I showed off in my previous videos, I do run StyleGen 2 on Anaconda in Windows. Um, I find it quite convenient since I do have the whole Adobe suit and, uh, well, especially using Adobe Premiere for the video editing, it is kind of annoying to switch between um, Ubuntu and Windows for, well, all the work. Um, and I do most of my normal day job work in Windows as well. So I like to keep it there. And chances are you start off into these tutorials with like a gaming computer or, well, if you come from the design world, maybe you have an Adobe computer, maybe you're on Apple even, then I can't really help you, but hey, um, thanks for visiting the channel anyway. But um, point is, there's a lot of people on Windows who want to run StyleGen without switching to Ubuntu and back. So let's talk about that. So I have acquired a nice laptop here that has a GeForce RTX 2080 Super. Um, I have not really done anything with regards to the GPU. This is just a normal driver that the um, Windows Update installed for me. And in all other regards, this laptop is pretty close to a pristine Windows, which means I hope I will encounter all the problems that people might run into. If I don't encounter some problems that other people might encounter, please leave a comment and I'll try to address them. To be fair, I did install Visual Studio Code and some programming stuff, so it might be that there's some weird programming related dependency that I accidentally already have that other people might get into trouble with. But apart from that, let's get into it. So what is Anaconda? Anaconda is basically, well, I want to say similar to Docker, as in it gives you a package of stuff or an environment that you can use to do, well, to do stuff. <laughs> But um, it operates on a different level where Docker is kind of like spinning up this whole virtual machine. Anaconda only creates like a um, Python environment basically that you can use to do all kinds of machine learning, data visualization. And for and the case that we're really interested in is like running style again, obviously. So let's download this.
All right. Um, so since we had the comparison with Docker already, there's something that Anaconda needs, which is similar to a um, Docker build script. And it has kind of a nice interface to build your containers or your environments. But what you really want to have to run a program is an environment file. And I have already created an environment file here, which is exactly the environment that I use on my other Windows computer to run StyleGAN to. And I went into the Conda command line and exported my environment data. So this is exactly the kind of stuff that is installed in my Conda environment. There's a lot of stuff here. I've kind of added to it here and there for all kinds of machine learning scripts uh, that I ran. But mostly this is for StyleGAN and all the custom scripts that I uh, wrote. At some point I might get into um, cleaning this up a little and actually only defining the environment with all the absolutely necessary stuff. But for this tutorial, it might be nice to just clone the exact environment that I used in my other videos to create. All right, so let's wait for the download to finish. So let's go through the setup now. I'll just like install everything as usual. Um, go on path. Nah, I'll just go with all the default options. I don't really need path. So what I usually do, what is um, What Anaconda allows you to do is it allows you to start a dedicated PowerShell or command window with Conda just working on the PowerShell and on the command line window. And I usually just have that in my quick bar down here. And um, then I just, whenever I go into style again, I just open the Anaconda PowerShell and work in that. All right. Um, I am not really interested in PyCharm not interested in the tutorial and stuff. So let's skip all that. Um, and we open the Anaconda Navigator. So this is actually like a nice interface to manage your Anaconda environments. And here is like the PowerShell thing. Um, this base here in front means that it's using Anaconda and it's in the base environment right now. But before we go do all this, we go back, we go to environments and we go to import. And we will call this the StyleGAN2 environment. And we will take the file here, StyleGAN2 YAML. I will have a link in the video description to probably like a GitHub where you can download this uh, StyleGAN2 YAML. And then we just click import and nice. We have some Unicode error. That was probably my fault. So hello, we are back on my desktop computer with the functioning Anaconda setup. Um, last we left off on the laptop, we had some parsing problem that did not allow us to actually import the Anaconda environment from the YAML file. And it took a while, as you can see in the bottom right corner uh, on the timestamp, but I've managed to figure out what the actual problem was with the parsing error. Um, turns out that when you export the environment data from a PowerShell, it behaves differently as to when you export the environment data from a CMD command line interface. So 
I've opened both a CMD here and a PowerShell just to demonstrate the problem. Uh, the command was conda n export and then we save that into a yaml file so we do like so and then we create this file and we do the same from here and now if we look in the details view we can see the cmd creates a five kilobyte file and the PowerShell creates a nine kilobytes file. It actually contains the same data, like when I say cut and ps yaml, it will have and uh, cut and cmd. There's no cut in command. Blah. Well. I will just do both here then. But if I open like another PowerShell, this one in blue, because it's the default Windows one that I haven't customized. So we can see it's basically the same content here, the pip data, dlib, blah, 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 blah. And if we scroll up, it's basically the same data, but because of the different encoding, it only works if you export it from CMD for some reason. So yeah, after I figured this out, I have now created a YAML file with the correct environment definition in the correct formatting and encoding. So now we're going back to the laptop to finish setting up the Anaconda and running StyleGen2. So after our little excourse in encoding problems, we are back on the laptop. Here's the Anaconda Navigator. Here's the new StyleGen YAML file. It's basically the same content as before, except now it's in the correct encoding. So we go back to the Anaconda Navigator, environments, um, and we import from the YAML file. And now it should just work. So we don't have any encoding problems. And now we can see down here, it is importing the environment style again too. Nice. And it is fetching the packages that are needed to create this environment. So this is still disabled. We can't really see what's going on. So for now, we just have to let it download all the conda packages and pip packages and create this environment. And I will just let this run for a while and then come back once the process has run through. All right, so we actually ran into some problem here. Conda env exception pip failed. Let's see if we can learn more doesn't really look like it's helpful. If we click okay, okay here. So it does seem like it has installed quite a bit. Tells me that there's a lot of updates for stuff here. But it has installed. So for fun, let's try to open this in a terminal and then we will re-export the uh, environment YAML file and see if there's any differences. So if something didn't install correctly, this should probably show a difference. We will uh, export the environment file. Let's call it new env YAML. So now if this file has like any differences, 
we should be able to like see that um think you can like do this compare selected okay let's see let's make this big and close this so what what actually changed so some certificates here have like a different version i guess that is fine some console shortcut stuff wasn't OpenSSL has some different stuff. PowerShell shortcut, sure, sure. And then this whole pip thing did not work. That's interesting. Um, cool. Let's go here and ask for pip version. Looks okay. I'm not quite sure why this specifically here has failed. Let's search a bit. Pip requirements in nth YAML conda. So I'm assuming that we didn't actually put pip as a requirement somewhere. Well, we did pip 19.1 for Python 3.7 is installed. Let's just try if this works manually here. So let's install the dlib, the first on our list. Huh. So this is interesting. We need CMake. That's a reasonable error actually. So CMake is a build program that you need apparently for this extension, which makes sense since CMake is part of the build chain of C++ basically, and it helps you compile and use C++ programs and some of these, well, computer vision stuff like Dlib and OpenCV uses C++ in the back end and then only creates a Python interface to use it. So um, we need to install CMake. Let's do that next. go to the official website and download the Windows stuff. Let's check the latest stable. So let's pick the installer and download that. And now we will just, whenever Brave is ready, install CMake. Yes, sure. Uh, we add CMake to the system path for all users. That should make it available to other programs. So now that that is finished, let's uh, exit this terminal and try one more time. Pip install Elip. I'm just going to use it without the version. Still doesn't work. Um, at this point, I will just try to restart the computer and then come back to you to see if that fixes the problem that it can't find CMake. Actually, let's just Yeah, CMake is not recognized here. If I open a normal PowerShell, CMake is recognized. If I open the command prompt normally, CMake is also recognized. So for some reason, this one doesn't recognize it. I assume we either need to restart the Anaconda Navigator 
to load the new environment variables and the path to actually find the CMake or restart the computer. I will try restarting an Anaconda first. Let's go here. And now here we are in the base environment. So we can switch to Conda activate StyleGAN2. Now we're in the StyleGAN2 environment that we created. It has already all the Conda packages, but it's missing the pip packages. So let's try pip install dlib again. And now it actually starts building the package. Okay, so we seem to have fixed the CMake problem since there's no error right now. I'm going to cancel this. And what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna rebuild this environment. So I will remove this environment that we just um, created here. This takes a moment apparently. All right. So now we're back on the base environment of Anaconda. And now I'm going to re-import uh, desktop style again too. And let's see now that we have CMake installed if everything just works. That would be the dream, obviously. <laughs> so the hope is you install CMake, you install Anaconda, you import the environment YAML and it just works. But let's see if we face any more problems. <laughs> All right, it seems like we have no more errors. Everything installed as expected. There's still lots of updates here. Um, but yeah, let's just open the terminal and do the same thing again, where we um, export the environment and compare it to the one that we used for the import. So conda and export new env2 yaml. Great, so let's open this in Visual Studio Code as well and compare it with the one here. And as we can see, it is exactly the same, except for this prefix that just says in which directory you have created all the files necessary for this environment, which in this case would be your user directory and then the Anaconda environment StyleGAN2, which is perfectly fine. Well, yeah, we managed to clone this environment that I use on my desktop computer onto this laptop. So now that everything's working, we are still in the StyleGAN2 environment. I'm going to open a, where is it, PowerShell. Okay, apparently I have to install that. But this is uh, the way that I like to use Anaconda, um, where you can just have a PowerShell prompt that just uses the Anaconda stuff. Um, there's also a way that you can just open like a normal PowerShell. And if you put Anaconda on the path and everything, it is um, also possible to just do it from here and enter the Anaconda environment from here uh, from a normal PowerShell, but I don't really like that approach. I just found it easier to use this PowerShell prompt here. And uh, you can also just pin this to taskbar. So if I close this, whenever I need an Anaconda or a Conda machine learning PowerShell, I just click here. Well, that didn't work. Great. <laughs> okay. The actual version to do this is we go here and we say Anaconda PowerShell prompt here. And now as we can see, this has a different symbol. 
And if we pin this to taskbar and close it and then open it again, we are still in the Stygen 2 environment. So now that we have a properly running Anaconda environment, let's try to see if it actually manages to run Stylegen 2. So we go to the desktop, we clone just, um, let's go for the standard NVLab Stylegen 2. Here, feel free to, if you want, you can obviously do the same with my fork, which has the some different rendering scripts and whatnot. But let's uh, try to make it work on the uh, on the standard style too. So um, let's just try and make this test command work. So we are here in the Anaconda PowerShell. We go into the style folder and we paste this. That doesn't work because it copy pasted it as two lines. So um, let's just do this right now. And copy paste it as one line and voila. We are now downloading the um, pickle file with the stylegen 2 FFHQ model. And if everything goes right, we will have some images in results 0000, 000, 000, 000 generate images. All right, so we have downloaded the model. And as Stylegen 2 started to run, we ran into a different problem. And that is MSVC GCC CLang installation on this computer could not be found. Um, that basically just means it is missing another compiler. In this case, this is about this part here. Uh, Stagon2 relies on custom TensorFlow ops that are compiled on the fly using NVCC. To test that your NVCC installation is working correctly, run this. So let's do that to confirm that this is the problem. Uh, clear, copy, paste, NVCC is not recognized, okay. Um, all right, so Visual Studio Community Edition needs to be installed. Currently, I only have Visual Studio Code, that is Good, that means that I actually see this error and can work out within this tutorial what needs to be done. So let's go here and download the Visual Studio Community Edition. Uh, yeah, here, too many pop-ups, please stop. Okay, so let's install Visual Studio Community. This part downloads it for us. Let's go back to the Stylegen GitHub and see what we actually need to do. Uh, after we have installed Visual Studio Community, um, we should then add the path. So we get to see how to adjust environment variables after all, I guess. All right, so let's see how far this is going. And here we are. So. I am going to select none of the extra workloads or individual components. As this, uh, as this description here didn't tell me any of that. So I'm just gonna use the Visual Studio Core editor. And let's see if that is enough to get these uh, build files here. 
or if we actually need to select one of the workloads. But let's install the core stuff for now. Sure. So apparently I have some old Visual Studio build tools installed here already. Interesting. Let's see if we get this running with just a Visual Studio community without any workloads, with just a basic editor, or if we need to select, come back to the installer and select any additional workloads or additional build tools. It did just mention something about build here. So let's hope that it just comes with the correct build tools. Okay, I am not interested in any of this right now. Just start in dark mode once to see that it's all in installed correctly. Nice, so here's Visual Studio. Great, so now it should be in C program files, blah, blah, blah. So let's go there, C program files. Microsoft Visual Studio 2019 community. There's no VC here. That's kind of what I expected, honestly. <laughs> so let's go and modify this and since we had the problem when we run this, uh, let's run it quickly again. MSVC GCC CLang. MSVC CLang CMake MS Build. Let's just install the workload for desktop development with C++. That should come with the correct compilers here to make this work. So MSVC, nice. Let's just take this workload and install it. It's coming in at a cheap 6.66 gigabytes. <laughs> nice, <laughs> I guess. So let's uh, modify and update our build tools. Oh yeah, we have to close this. Continue. All right, see you back after this has installed. All right, so now that the Visual Studio Community 2019 C++ build tools have been installed, we need to reboot the computer. So I'm going to stop the recording here, restart, and then pick up where we left off. All right, so I just restarted my computer. Um, let's first try to see if we can just jump into Star again too, and just run this now. Probably won't just work yet, no, okay. That means we still have to add the folder to the path as described here. So now we search for path and we actually added the environment variables. So let's take the system variable path, double click here for editing. And now we add a new one. And this should be this, but just to make sure, let's go here, copy that, put it here. Ah, so this actually goes to the executable. So let's go here. Uh, yeah, seems to be working fine. So let's just copy paste this and this time put it here. Okay. 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 Great. Let's exit this and open a new. We go to desktop. We go to style again too. We run, let's run the test thing here. 
Okay, that does not work. Let's run this one. That does also not work. Nice, I guess. Okay, let's see. It's probably something like a path thing. That is very interesting. Let's search for this problem again. So this is a style flow thing. Style going to read me, read me, okay. <laughs> okay, so this looks promising. Um, let's check compiler bindia search path. So that would be in desktop style again, DNN lib. Okay, lib custom ops. So let's open that with Visual Studio Code as well. And no, go away. Uh, here we have this. And we have community VC tools, MSVC, and we have a different version number here. Wow, is that really like how it has to change? That's kind of disappointing. That that is bin host. That is. That is so weird. There's like no way that you have to do this in a code, right? Okay, let's let's try. Okay, so that actually worked and produces a different error now. It seems like the path in the code actually overrides the global path for the compiler search. So now we have NVCC. Okay. New problem. So this version replacing has actually worked. Wow. Um, so NVCC is part of the CUDA toolkit. And we will have to install that as well. So let's um, go to this page and download this. Let's use the network installer, why not? And this is the NVIDIA development tools that are used for all the machine learning and CUDA stuff. And because Stylegen 2 relies on these custom TensorFlow operations that are compiled on the fly using NVCC, you need to install the development tools from NVIDIA to execute this on the fly compilation of basically the CUDA development code that runs the Stylegen 2. So let's do this. So now we are going to extract this and then it will guide us through the setup. So we just choose all the default options here. So now this installer downloads and installs all the relevant um, NVIDIA development drivers and the compilation tools to run the NVCC code that is compiled on the fly. 
I sped this up. See you later. All right. So uh, it appears that the CUDA tools installation actually resets your NVIDIA driver and crashes OBS. So I didn't capture the very last part, but basically it installed correctly. Uh, I clicked through the dialog and the only thing I changed was uh, I didn't click the option for having a desktop shortcut to NVIDIA GeForce Experience. So let's go back here and now check if there's NVCC. Actually, let's restart and now check. Huh. So we now have an NVCC in the path. That's nice. So let's go to desktop. Let's go to style again. And let's go back to our command to run the generator and see if it works now. We see the TensorFlow plugins are now pre-processing and compiling. That is the NVCC compiler that we just installed with the CUDA toolkit. So that is all looking good and working as expected. And now we're generating the images. We have an out of memory issue, but it doesn't seem to have crashed the actual rendering, except for the first one maybe. So let's see, uh, explorer dot to open the folder. Then in the results nine, we have four images here. And those are, if I'm correct, exactly these four here. So, and that's about it. Let's do like the summary. We have the CUDA toolkit. We have Of course, Visual Studio Community Edition. We have the Anaconda and the CMake. And then we run style again. And of course, one important ingredient in all of this is this environment definition. So the final ingredients to get StyleGen2 running on Windows with Anaconda are the CUDA toolkit, Visual Studio Community Edition, CMake, Anaconda, this environment definition for the Anaconda environment, and then of course, either mine or the official StyleGen2 repository for the code. Um, again, this is for the CUDA development codes that are used in StyleGen2, as mentioned here. This is also for extra compilers that are used both in StyleGen2 and probably also, um, no, actually the pip went through only with CMake. So this is also for the um, extra development dependencies of StyleGen2. I'm pretty sure that CMake itself is probably also bundled in Visual Studio 2019. Um, so there might be a way to skip the CMake installation if you already have it shipped in Visual Studio Community Edition. But yeah, these are like the compiler dependencies that you need to get Anaconda and StyleGen running. And then we install Anaconda itself to have the Python environment set up and we initialize our environment with this YAML file of the environment definition. And then we can run Anaconda in this nice um, PowerShell prompt and use it to run StyleGen2. And actually, 
generate our images. All right, so I hope you managed to follow along and get Stalgan running on your system as well. Um, as always, if this helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. Uh, I have more videos like this planned. I want to broaden my channel a little bit, put on a bit more art. Uh, I've been experimenting with shorts. Let me know in the comments if you like that format. Um, and yeah, for the future I plan to spread out a little bit. I don't really want to become the Stalgen one trick only channel. I have some uh, some other ideas, uh, going back to DC again, then trying to um, showcase some other cool stuff that you can do with like exploiting a slow motion interpolation and in general from there on just go through all kinds of interesting AI software that can be used in the more artistic context. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in that and want to see the upcoming videos of mine. Um, as always, uh, the mandatory shoutouts, you can follow me on Instagram, you can ask me to collaborate on art stuff, um, I have a business email and of course, if you really enjoyed this video or if this helped you in a way that saved you time or, <laughs> or enabled you to do something that you previously couldn't. Feel free to also uh, check out my Patreon. Uh, your support would mean a lot. And that's it. <laughs>